Well, it's that time again to call out Spectrum News Channel 1. And I said I wasn't going to be talking about Brooklyn as much anymore. But, uh, you know, I, I was watching Mornings on 1. And you would think the top story would be the shooting that happened at the McDonald's in bed -Stuy. But apparently, that was not the case. In fact, Channel 1 has no information about it anywhere on their website. So... Obviously, they weren't going to put it in the papers, but uh, today's thumbnail is Dean Meminger with his wonderful New York Post saying, I'll take a brief pause there because I'm just so upset. Basically, Dean Meminger is questioning, there was a shooting in Brooklyn? Yeah, I'm doing my best Dean Meminger impersonation because this guy is more of a political reporter. You you know Dean Meminger very well, folks. He 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 basically is somebody who loves to talk about his politics so much. He doesn't even belong on the on the morning broadcast. Right? He really doesn't. I like that other guy who does the weekends better. He, he he's at least decent. He's at least decent. But when it comes to Dean Meminger, Dean just stick to the politics. No one wants to see you when they wake up in the morning. Alright. And Rochelle Boone, we do miss her. I will admit, I, I still miss Rochelle. If Rochelle wasn't going through cancer treatment, she probably would have been anchoring the morning news. <sighs> okay, well, I am just beyond disgusted, upset. and You want even more proof before we get to the article? Here's the article. Let's see if we can even go on the community and neighborhoods. Obviously nothing. Which doesn't surprise me. Okay, well we do have something. In fact, I think this was... The yeah! In fact, Channel 1 buried the story. Now I remember. This was on the homepage this morning. Look at this. A brief article. So you know we're not reading from this. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not reading from this. By the way, you want to watch a good report. Channel 2 did a great job covering it this afternoon. I, I should have watched Channel 2 at, at work. I should have watched Channel 2 when I, I, I had the TV at Abam Pan. I really should have. They would have at least let off with it. So I may just have to stop watching Channel 7 at this point. Because they're really, in the afternoons at the 12 noon broadcast, they're really starting to get on my nerves. Alright, so let's get to the article and I'll read it. And again, if you want to watch that video, I'll, I'll have it carded. That way you can um, see for yourself how of a good job they did. But I don't want to play it on here. I, I want to read the article. So here we go. And we don't have that much to read today. Because at the very end, I do have some good news for Fresh Meadows that I want to discuss. So, let me just close some of this stuff out, because I am just beyond, again, disgusted with Channel 1. So, I have three stories we're going to read from Brooklyn, and I'm going to read one crime story from Jamaica. So, here we go. First up, the main headline. There was a shooting at a McDonald's in bedford Stevenson following a food dispute. So, let's read this. Charges are still pending against a 20-year-old man in Brooklyn accused of shooting and critically injuring a McDonald's worker during an argument over a food order on Monday night. The employee, a 23-year-old male, remains hospitalized in critical condition after being shot in the neck. Police said the trouble began inside the McDonald's restaurant located at 1531 Fulton Street in bedford Stuyvesant just after 7 p.m. last night when the suspect's mother engaged staff in a verbal dispute over her food. Oh boy, that is not good. And especially because yesterday I had to show the manager in Bayside the McDonald's I didn't get my drink. So that's why it's very important to keep the receipt. So just want to state that for the record. Police said the trouble began inside the McDonald's at 1531 Fulton Street in bed -Stuy. So this is where it happened. According to law enforcement sources, the mother informed the suspect, her 20-year-old son, about the beef and he intervened, getting into an argument. Eventually, the dispute went outside of the restaurant 
where the suspect accused pulled out a gun and shot the worker in the neck, according to police. Officers from the 7-9 precinct responded to the shooting. EMS rushed the employee to Brookdale University Hospital, where he was listed in critical condition. So, obviously, very disturbing. And Channel 1 barely brought this up at all today. So let's see if the Brooklyn DA does the right thing. Because at least this didn't happen in Manhattan. So if this was Manhattan, you know Alvin Bragg would let this guy off the hook. You know he would. You know he would. So I am just beyond frustrated with Channel 1 again. <coughs> so... Now what I want to do is actually read this. And I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just beyond frustrated with this TV station. Three people burned at a playground in Brooklyn. I mean really. A woman was arrested for allegedly dumping oil and burning three people in a park in Brooklyn on Sunday evening. According to police, at 9.30 on July 31st, two groups of people got into a dispute at Heckscher Playground at Linden Street and Wilson Avenue. During the altercation, police said that the 36-year-old suspect named Felicio Del Toro allegedly became irate and overturned a pot of hot oil, burning three people, including a child, in the process. So according to AM New York, there was some type of altercation um, and everybody panicked. The child was screaming. A uh, witness said, quoted saying. So, obviously, we know that EMS did respond. The victim was taken to area hospital for treatment. Mr. Del Toro was taken... Hang on. Oh, Miss Del Toro, excuse me. I'm sorry, but, you know, Channel 1 should be covering these stories. I really shouldn't have to, but... It's my obligation... Because you guys need to know what's going on. Alright, so the suspect was taken into custody and charged with three counts of assault and three counts of reckless endangerment. Uh, so, very disturbing. You know, at least... Th I'm sorry, Channel 1 should have brought a reporter over there. That's a more serious story. I mean, I understand that this rape attempt... And thankfully, Channel 7 did bring this up, but, you know... It's like, if you're not watching the regular stations, sorry, don't even bother watching New York One. Or Channel One. So, here's what we know. A woman was choked and raped on Saturday, July 1st at 8.25 in the morning in Bushwick, Woodbine Street in Ridgewood Place. So, it says here, that the woman was grabbed from behind, placed in a chokehold, and forced her to the ground. So, apparently, the suspect was accused of simulating lewd acts over her clothing. So, the suspect did flee on foot. The 8-3 precinct was made aware of the situations. Oh, I said situations, plural, because there was two situations. Attempted rape and, obviously, an attempted assault. So that, that makes sense as a plural there. So, originally she refused medical attention, but then she went to Interfaith Medical Center. So here's what we know. According to Crime Stoppers, they're looking for a 30-year-old man with dark complexion and a medium build and around 5 feet 8 inches with track dreadlock hair and mustache and chin hair. He was last seen wearing a black baseball cap with a rose design in the front, black t-shirt, black shorts, and black sneakers. So, The police definitely have a good look at this guy. There's no question. I mean, hopefully the 8-3 will find him. So, I have to go to the patch, because apparently one of my viewers bought this up to me off the record. And, 
really hate this annoying Gmail thing. It really needs to go away. So here we go. Transformer explosion at Queen's Arthur Ash Stadium injures three people. Three people were left with major burns following the explosion. So this is not the best timing as we have the U.S. Open there in a couple of weeks at the end of this month. Here we go. The blaze erupted at the Tennis Center at Flushing Meadows Corona Park near Meriden Road at about 1.40 p.m. according to the FDNY. So it says here that this happened yesterday, August 1st. Three people were hurt with major burns following the explosion. There do not appear to be any events scheduled at the time of the explosion. But again, remember, we do know that um, Arthur Ashe will be hosting the U.S. Open. So, let's see. There's, there's barely any vague details. Uh... Let's see if we can find anything on NBC4 New York. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. This is it. Okay. So this was according to one of the workers who was inside the building at the time. This apparently was an electrical housing area that serves the stadium. Okay, so at least Channel 4 was a little bit more specific. Okay, getting to, believe it or not, something else that came up. Apparently, there was a homicide in Queens. This is the first I'm hearing about this. Yep. Uh, this happened in the Rockaways. Arvine. So here we go. The youngster, not identified as a 14-year-old boy, was located in a driveway at a home on Beach 67th Street near Almedia Avenue in the Arvine section. And of course, no surprise, the 100 did respond, and the child was pronounced dead. And again, very disturbing. How in the world could Channel 1 ignore this? Should have been a breaking news story. Should have been live at 8 o'clock covering this. You know, I know they couldn't send a reporter, but at least, you know, Dean Memminger could have brought it up on the air for 30 seconds. Okay, and then the last crime story. There was a forcible touching incident in Jamaica. So, let's see where this happened. 169th Street Subway Station! Happened back on July 15th. Here we go. So it says here that the 32-year-old female victim was exiting this F train station at 169th Street and Hillside Avenue around 10 a.m. The unidentified man approached her from behind and grabbed her right buttock before running off in an unknown direction, police from the 107 precinct said. So... We do have a picture from the Crime Stoppers... Um, according to the unit, we have a bald man between 20 to 30 year old with a slim build. He was last seen wearing a white undershirt under a black hooded sweatshirt, black sweatpants and blue Nike sneakers and was carrying a black bag with a dark complexion. So, if I were to give a height, it's probably 5 foot 10. Probably. Wait, how tall he was. And in one picture, it looks like he might have been wearing glasses. It's so hard to make out with that grainy image, but... Oh, yeah, he's definitely 5'10". At most. But this is what I mean. You know, people are desperate. And this is what happens. No touchy-touchy. Right? Okay, and last but not least, there is some good news. Hillcrest Street in Fresh Meadows has been codenamed in honor of a deceased NYPD detective. This is a very good memorial. And this was a street naming 
attended by City Councilman James Gennaro. So here we go. This is 164th place and Goffles Avenue, codenamed Detective Raymond Aber Ray. Detective Raber Amon was a 20-year veteran of the force. So it says here that he was honored right near his family home. He died back on April 13, 2020 from complications as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And what was assumed as a pre, uh, presumed exposure while on duty. At the time of his death, Detective Eber was assigned to the Special Victims Unit in Queens. He was 43 years old at the time of his passing. City Councilman James Gennaro, who represents the 24th District, authored the City Council legislation to co-name the street in his memory. Earlier this month, the bill passed along with support from Queens Republican Vicky Palladino, who represents the 19th District. When most of us had the luxury to work from home, Aber was out on the front line, said Councilman James Gennaro. He dedicated his life working to protect New Yorkers and keep our streets safe. It is my hope that anybody, anytime somebody comes down 164th place in Goffles Avenue, they are reminded of the great legacy Detective Aber leaves behind. It is an honor to be here today along with his family and members of the NYPD to pay tribute to a local hero. So, here is more of a bio regarding Detective Aber. So, according to the bio, Detective Aber was born in 1977. He was born to parents who emigrated from the Philippines and opened a restaurant before buying a home in Queens where they raised their son back in the 1980s. After graduating from Francis Lewis High School in the 1990s, he earned a degree in criminal justice at St. John's University, just blocks away from Saturday's co-naming ceremony. So yeah, I think I know where this is. You can look it up on Google Maps. In the early 2000s, Aber joined the NYPD and was assigned to the 11th Precinct in Bayside and later to the 112th and Forest Hills, where he worked in the anti-crime unit until he was transferred to the Queen's Special Victim Squad at the same precinct. He was working the night shift when he began feeling ill back on March 30th, 2020. After quarantining in the basement of his home with fever and chills for 10 days, and then experiencing a shortness of breath, he was rushed to Booth Memorial Medical Center on April 9th, where he died four days later. Yes, I can confirm he was taken to Booth. because That was the closest space they had at that time. So... I'm going to look this up and see where this is. 164th Drive and... Oh, my bad. 164th Place in Goffles Avenue. So I think I know where this is. Let's Google this. I think I have an idea. Yeah, I know exactly where this is. Yeah. This is right by St. John's. Look at that. Wow. So they probably... Yeah, because again... Queen's Hospital didn't have enough room and he was taken to boof up in Flushing. Wow, so this app so he lived right by Queen's Hospital. That's interesting. And look at this, St. John's is right there. I'm just gonna say this right now. If you're a student at St. John's and if you get the chance during the new semester, try to at least consider walking over to this area because this is a man who sacrificed everything, and before COVID, he definitely lived a good life. There is there is no question. He was somebody who made sacrifices, worked hard for his family, and he was an immigrant from the Philippines. So, this was the last view from August of 2019, but I really hope Google's going to do a street view in this area because um, that would really be a great great tribute to him if Google Maps had something on their street view. So again, this is the news that Channel 1 will not be covering and it is my hope that we keep talking about what they're refusing to cover. We can't continue to stay silent about Channel 1. We must continue to call them out. 
So that's it.